she wasn't supposed to be there at all. But the family insisted that she come for the holiday. And so on that Black Sabbath, Danielle Aloni found herself in a safe room in Kibbutz near Oz, together with her six-year-old daughter, Amelia, and her sister, Sharon Aloni Cunio, and her husband, David, and their two twins, Yuli and Emma. When the terrorists closed in on their house and set it on fire, David escaped through the window together with little Yuli. Danielle, Sharon, and the two girls remained in the smoke in the safe room. In the safe room, we realized that the house was being burned down. My sister left a message that we were being burned and we probably wouldn't make it out. We accepted our fate that we would die here by inhaling smoke or fire depending on which came first. Just an understanding? Understanding, fear, there are no words. What can you do? Will you be scared you'll be dead in a second? You won't feel anything anymore? After I covered my daughter with a blanket, I don't even know why. Maybe the smoke wouldn't penetrate or penetrate it more slowly. And I hugged her tightly and I told her, I'm sorry, we're going to die. We no longer had much strength in our bodies. We had been in the safe room for six hours. My sister helped me open the window. There were a number of terrorists standing in front of us with guns drawn. I closed my eyes waiting for the barrage. We heard shots outside. Then I opened my eyes because they weren't shooting and they just pointed at us, told us like that and signaled we should get out. And we're already exhausted. They literally pulled us out. It was a relief when you suddenly realized that you weren't being shot at, that after all you were being taken somewhere, or that it would be a lie to say otherwise. Yes, yes, because we were waiting for it. And you realized at that moment that from that point you have to live moment by moment. Absolutely. At this point we were being taken and I didn't know anything. This cart they were waiting for arrived. They picked us up, started driving. What's going on here? It's, it's a horror that cannot be explained in words. I think there are still no words in Hebrew that can describe this horror, that new words need to be invented to describe what happened there that day. I was sure it was a lynching. They just kept giving me blows from behind, the head and the back. We arrived in Gaza. They told me to get up, and they took the girl from my hands, Emma. They took the girl from her mother's hands. It's that they didn't know that I'm not her mother. I'm just her mother for there. Do they just physically take her from you? Yes, and that was the moment I managed to open my mouth and start shouting, No, no, my daughter, my daughter, no. binti, binti, He made out like this. And here a curtain fell over my eyes. There's some mechanism at work, a mechanism that represses what I saw because I don't remember who the girl was handed over to. I don't know which direction they went in. I failed to protect my daughter. She's like my daughter. She's my girl. I don't wish for any mother to have to go through this test. You said it was a horror movie, imprisonment. They took us down the tunnels. They took you straight down to the tunnels? Yes, a prison anyone can understand, imagine. You saw in the movie, you saw articles in Israel about people sitting inside prison facilities. But if I were to ask you how you imagine tunnels, first of all, it's total darkness. They have infrastructure, electricity, water in places meant to house people. The passages are total darkness. What, it's hot? It's humid? No air? It's not hot. It's insanely humid. The clothes, wet all the time, smelly, no air, no air. What, is it hard to breathe? Yes, we got to the first tunnel, which was probably some sort of stopover, where I saw people. There I saw adults, ties, a handcuffed boy. I think I saw a few more handcuffs there. What did you see on their faces? Shock, fear, this unknown, this situation that, this reality that we were thrown into from one moment to the next. 
רגע אחד לרגע אחר עם פנים חבולות. When we entered the next tunnel and I saw the injuries, people who were so bruised with open wounds, with bruised faces, people who had already seen their loved ones murdered outside were there. And all these things my daughter also saw. There was someone who came once that I saw to collect a list of medicines. Real medical treatment? Never. The situation is not good there. The situation is that there are, especially when many people are crammed together. What do you mean crammed together? Take me to this room. Imagine a room roughly this width, mattresses like for refugees, one next to the other, close together. That means everyone with their own breaths and their injuries and everyone is crammed next to each other. And the snoring and the voices and the diseases. What did you do there all the time? You are the mother of a six-year-old girl. What did you do? First of all, lots of dead hours. Telling stories, it beautifies the painful reality. I told her that we are here, but why are we here? I told her because they took all the most special children and put them in this place to protect them from these booms outside. You see, booms happen outside, but they don't happen here. We're safe here. I would tell her that every day we are here brings us closer to getting out. We would choose a gift for each day we were there. And I had everything. Yes, all the gifts. Every day, every day, I would take a moment in the day, sit Amelia next to me, and I would start praying to God, listen to the voice of a girl, and praying for our return, for our release, for everyone's health. And I would ask my daughter to repeat every sentence after me. And when she would go to sleep, Shuli Ran's song, Lament, would play in my head a lot. Which is like such a prayer, like a call to the Holy One, blessed be he, be here for me. As a mother, you mobilize forces that I'm not sure were even there before. You say in captivity, I will do everything, everything, so that my girl will get through this trauma in the most gentle way, in the most quote-unquote gentle way that a child can have. And you do everything. You beg for food sometimes. You beg to shower her. Even if we can't shower, you find the strength for her. What a test of parenthood. This is the test of my life. It was a test of my life. And I marked everything with a tick. Everything.